All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome. And thank you for uh, bearing with me as I made weird faces at the camera to make sure that I was also going live on YouTube. That was a lesson I learned at our first interest meeting. So thank you for everyone who is able to join. Uh, we do have this set up as a webinar. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the Q&A. And I will keep an eye on that, uh, as well as the, the chat I'll try to keep an eye on. I'm not very good at multitasking with that sort of thing when it comes to being able to like keep my train of thought and looking at the chat. Uh, but welcome, my name is Jen Blair, and this is our May interest meeting for the virtual beer judge training. And what I'm going to do today, we've got some slides that I'll show you. I will walk you through the website and talk through a few of the resources that are available to you. And uh, again, as we're going through any questions you have, please feel free to enter those in the Q&A. And um, I will answer those. I'll try to leave enough time at the end that we can get to all of them. Uh, but let's get started. I'm going to share my screen with you all. And I also uh, will show you as we're talking through these, I don't want you to feel like you're going to need to take notes or anything like that, uh, because I will show you where you will be able to find these slides at the very end. And let me get this one thing out of the way here. So here are my slides and thank you for my lovely friends, uh, Nat and Asa who are texting right now and also making sure that we're keeping uh, notes on all of the questions. So um, everyone should be so thankful uh, to have friends as supportive as the two of them. Um, so let's talk about this beer judge training overview and what it's going to look like. Uh, so, the first thing I wanted to do, and of course, now that I'm trying to um, do this, my site, there we go. So, you know, I actually, I need to update this slide because we have almost 600 women now who have signed up for this, which is absolutely amazing. And the, you know, the enthusiasm and how quickly so many people signed up, uh, you'll probably hear me say it a few times when I first came up with the idea I was thinking maybe 40, maybe 50 women would sign up, not nearly 600. So uh, the, by last count, we have women from over, from over. We have women from 10 different countries, 44 different US states. Uh, I can't tell you how many people have reached out to say, hey, I'm a BJCP judge, what can I do to help? Um, you know, hey, I, I do, I have this skill set, I have this skill set. So many people said, I don't know exactly what you need me to do, but I'm here for whatever you need, whatever you need to make this succeed. Uh, so I've, I've really been floored by the amount of response for this. Um, so a little bit about me and, you know, why you would want to show up every week and hear me talk about beer. I'm all beer all the time. I love talking about beer. Um, I love teaching people about beer. It's a fascinating subject that really touches all aspects of, of life from obviously from eating and drinking to economics, to history, to science, to technology, um, but I digress. Uh, so about me, I am an advanced Cicerone. There's currently 100 and I think 39 advanced Cicerones. There's less than 150 worldwide. There's about 25 women who are advanced Cicerones. Uh, I'm studying for my master Cicerone exam this coming November. There are currently 19 master Cicerones. Again, three are women. Um, I'm a national BJCP judge. Uh, hopefully, I will be a master BJCP judge soon. Uh, I am one, one point away from advancing my score. So I actually took a tasting exam, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, I took a tasting exam just a couple of weeks ago to get that one point and um, show them who's boss when it comes to uh, master BJCP. Uh, one of the things I've also done within the BJCP organization is become an exam grader. 
that's one of the ways as a judge, as somebody who's doing this program aimed at getting more women at the judging table and more women through the BJCP program that, you know, I can support the organization in that way by becoming an exam grader and volunteering my time. And of course, I'm hosting this free virtual BJCP training course. I'm the co-host of the False Bottom Girls podcast, which is a podcast about beer and brewing. I am on the American Home Brewers Association Governing Committee. I was just reelected to my second term, which begins next month. Uh, so if you are watching this and you're an AHA member and voted for me, thank you. I'm the chapter lead of the Atlanta Pink Boots Society. I'm also an award-winning home brewer and pro brewer. I am the beer program manager at New Realm Brewing Company. I'm located in our Atlanta facility. and. I'm a Road to 100 mentor, as well as a Brewers Association mentorship program mentor. And, you know, I really credit Eugenia Brown for giving me the, you know, seeing what she was able to do with the Road to 100 and seeing that there are so many women out there who need to know that the beer industry is accessible to them and how do we give how do we give women that access uh, so you know looking at everything she was able to do really inspired me to say yeah you know what if i want to see more women at the judging table then i can do what it takes for me to get more women at the judging table and then one note that I skipped over, before I joined New Realm, I was the executive director of the North American Craft Maltsters Guild, which is an international trade association, and uh, that is dealing with small scale maltsters. So when I say that I'm all beer all the time, I am really not exaggerating. So that's just a little bit about me, and I'll tell you now a little bit about the program. So the way this is going to work and we will we'll go through some of these details in just a few moments, but this is going to be a 14 week free virtual training program. What it's going to cover is beer styles, specifically the 2015 BJCP style guidelines. There are other style guidelines. The Brewers Association, for example, has their own set of style guidelines. Uh, you know, the, the parameters around the beers don't change or it's not if, if you're learning a BJCP say, what a Kolsch is, according to the BJCP guidelines, the Brewers Association guidelines aren't going to say something completely different, uh, but the Brewers Association also updates their guidelines each year. So for the purposes of this, we will be learning about beer styles from the 2015 style guidelines. The, we will also talk about judging techniques and best practices. One thing that I will definitely um, continue to remind all of you of when we're going through particularly judging techniques and best practices. I will tell you the, the ways that I judge. My way isn't necessarily the best way. It's certainly not the only way. As you become more experienced as a beer judge, you will learn what sorts of methods you like as well. But there are some overall best practices that we'll definitely go through. And of course, sensory evaluation skills. I want to be able to prepare you to pass your BJCP beer judge entrance exam as well as the BJCP beer judging exam if that's a path that you choose to take. I also, again, back to looking at something like Road to 100, so many women now that I'm so fortunate to have in my network. So I'd like to create that support network of women within the beer judging community as well, you know, to create that solidarity and know that you have some place when, uh, if you know, if something happens that you need to talk through, or you think, was that weird that that happened to me, or like this, this was discouraging, um, or this was fantastic. I can't wait to share it with people. Making sure that we have that network of women uh, to, you know, show that it's not happened, that things aren't happening to you in isolation. We're all part of these shared experiences. And so I'm really excited about creating that support network for all of us within the beer judging community because it's something that the beer judging community definitely needs. And then of course, get more women at the table. I spent this past week judging at the National Homebrew Competition out in Colorado. And I was the only woman at my table every day. And you know, it's it's kind of a double-edged sword because it was nice to see that the organizers did a fantastic job of making sure that there was a woman at each table uh, but there were also tables with no women at all because there weren't enough women judges to kind of scatter around through the tables 
we need to get more women at the judging table. And that's, you know, that's the end of the story right there. Uh, so that's what we're going to do over the next few weeks is break down those barriers, um, perceived or real, and, you know, in getting women to the judging table and getting all of us comfortable showing up at a judging table. And then, of course, you know, getting more uh, BJCP accredited, more Cicerone accredited women everywhere in the beer industry, because the beer industry definitely needs us. So when we're talking about these weekly sessions and a, another recurring theme throughout this that I will talk about is, you know, spend time thinking about what your goals are with this, with going through this training. Um, how much time can you dedicate? To, to training and, and studying, you know, doing self-study on your own outside of the weekly sessions. And, you know, if you, if you make every single session, that's great. If you can't make any of the sessions, but you watch it at a later time, that's fine too. So our sessions are going to cover the beer styles that are outlined in the 2015 BJCP style guidelines. And I'll show you in a few minutes where you can find those resources. Each session is going to use the same template and the same style of presentation, and each session will be recorded. You know, I decided to do the same template because I think that that repetition and knowing when you come to one of the sessions, what to expect is definitely helpful. It also helps you prepare ahead of time or you know, guide your studying after that. So just know that each one of our sessions when we're talking about the beer styles, it will be different beer styles, but we'll address all of them in the same way. The sessions will be recorded and uploaded to the website. I, I think 48 hours or so, I don't think that's too ambitious for me to uh, commit to doing it within two days. And then the additional resources will be available for all participants at underthegenfluence.beer. So when I'm talking about the website, that's my blog. That's where we're going to have all the information. And in a few minutes, I'll walk you through what that is going to look like. Uh, so you know when you go to sign up where you can go to find all of that information. Additional opportunities. As I mentioned, we had a really strong outpouring of support and volunteers for, you know, for BJCP judges saying, how can I help? What can I do? So we will have BJCP judges available to review your practice score sheets and provide feedback. I'm also hoping I can get a few of them to host virtual tasting sessions. And a lot of this stuff, again, not expecting almost 600 women to sign up um, and, you know, starting ugly, not waiting until I have everything completely figured out to get started, just getting started. Um, these additional opportunities will shake out over the next few weeks precisely what they're going to look like, uh, but they will be there. And I do have this note here to provide suggestions, uh, provide feedback. I'm doing this to support you and to be here to assist you. And I want to make sure that you're getting the resources you need. So if we, um, you know, maybe I have this idea for here's how I think BJCP judges would be helpful for interacting with all of you and preparing. Um, and maybe you think, yeah, that's great, but I, th I think this would actually be better. Let me know. And I will, again, I will show you in just a moment how you can do that. Uh, we're going to hopefully organize some regional meetups. Like I said, we've had, you know, 44 states in the United States, over 10 countries at this point. Uh, so now, especially as the world is slowly starting to open up, as we can safely gather, uh, organizing, helping out, organizing some regional meetups. So if you've got a group, say I'm in Atlanta, I know I've got a great group of women here from Atlanta who are participating. And I say, hey, you know what, I'm, uh, uh, let's, let's do a meetup. Let's all grab Sierra Nevada Pale Ale and sit down and fill out score sheets, which sounds like a super nerdy thing to suggest. Let's all get together and write and, and practice test taking, um, but it will be beneficial. And that obviously helps with building that network. Um, so being able to help assist those regional meetups and then ability to schedule one-on-one -on -one with myself, with other mentors. And again, if there's, you know, if there's somebody who you think it would be very helpful and beneficial for you to speak to, shoot me a message and we'll see what we can work out. And the same goes with me as well. So I'm, that's definitely one of the aspects that I'm still working on precisely what that's going to look like. But uh, I, I think a lot of you listening right now, um, we, we have spoken in one way or another for, with many of you and hopefully you, know, you can attest to 
the fact that uh, if, if you've got a question about really anything, you can reach out to me. And if I don't know the answer, I can definitely point you in the, in the right direction to getting that answer. So what to expect? Recurring calendar invites for the weekly beer style sessions. This is actually going to change somewhat. And I will show you in a moment what that's going to look like as far as you being able to set up the calendar invites. Uh, all sessions will be posted on the website within 48 hours of the live session. And again, I'll show you where you'll, where you'll be able to find that. Communications regarding additional opportunities for judging practice. You know, uh, when I first posted about doing this, I had somebody at a local homebrew club reach out and say, hey, we're doing an internal club competition and we're also wanting it to be an interactive training experience for new judges. Do you think any of the women in your program would be interested? And so I sent out an email and there was probably five of us, um, actually it ended up being five, five women and, and one guy uh, showed up, you know, and we sat at a, a, a judging table together and walked through a score sheet and judged some of their internal uh, club competition entries. So, you know, as those arise, I'll definitely make sure that you know about those. And again, I'll show you in just a moment where you'll be able to find that information. And then get, getting people ready to take the beer judging exams in fall of 2021. Uh, with this, this session, I know last time I had run out of time to go in depth into the BJCP, into the structure. So when I'm talking about the beer judging exams, what does that mean? Uh, we will cover that next week in our first, our first official training meeting. Uh, but know that there are, with judging exams, getting seats can be tricky. That's part of what we're doing with this program, too, is a strength in numbers sort of thing and seeing how we can affect change to make that a little more accessible to everyone. But my goal for you is that at the end of this 14 weeks, you will be able, you'll feel completely confident taking the online entrance exam for the BJCP and signing up for a beer judging exam. How to contact me. So this is my email, jen at underthegenfluence.beer. I have a contact form on the website. I will show you in just a moment. Um, either one is fine. You know, actually with, the, uh, with the, the form on the website, it goes straight to that email anyway. So if you're on the website and you have a question and when think of something, just go to the form and send it to me because I get it the same way. Uh, the other thing with the contact form on the website is that you do have the option to submit anonymously. You know, this is a safe space for all of you to ask questions and, you know, whatever you need. Uh, but if you have if you have a question that for whatever reason you would like to submit anonymously, you can do that. And then that feedback, you know, that 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 answer will come in the form of, a, you know, an aggregated response to the group. So everyone will be able to see that. Again, ask questions, send feedback. I want to hear it. I want to make sure that this program is as effective as it possibly can be for all of you. So these next few slides, I'm going to actually pause and take a drink of water. Don't be overwhelmed at the next few slides. Don't feel like you need to write everything down because uh, again, when we get to the website portion, I've already got all of this out for you to see in one place. You know, the, with the BJCP guidelines, there are over a hundred styles. And so what we're doing with this framework is breaking that down into manageable pieces. So that's what this is. And I just wanted to put it up so you all could get an idea of what the schedule is going to look like. But again, don't, you know, don't get overwhelmed and don't worry. Um, you can see some of these things like our, our first session, we have 11 beer styles. Not all of those beer styles are going to be tested on, uh, you know, on the I, any of the BJCP exams. So we'll talk about uh, study strategies in just a moment. But the next several slides are just giving you an overview of this is how this is going to break down, right? This is how we eat the elephant one bite at a time, going through and breaking it down into smaller, smaller categories. So you're not looking at 105 beer styles all at once. And you'll see for week seven, we go back, we do a review of the first six weeks. We do the same thing as we get started in that next kind of chunk of looking at beer styles. And you can see week 14, we wrap up with reviewing the styles from the previous six weeks. So at that point, 
you know, we'll have been together for several weeks. We'll know all about beer styles. And I do want to note, as I have here, when you're looking at the BJCP guidelines, we are not including every category in the training schedule because categories 27 through 34 um, are not supposed to be tested on the beer judging exam. Um, so those styles within those categories will not be covered specifically within the training. It's still important as you have time that you go through and review those styles just to be a, a well-rounded um, beer uh, beer enthusiast and soon to be beer judge. But just know as you're looking through the guidelines, it's that's that's why you'll see a number of categories that aren't included on there. So when we're talking about studying, again, this is going to be, you know, make this what you want. Be realistic about how much time you can afford to dedicate to this. You know, I start out every week with like this very ambitious that suddenly every single day I get up at 5 a.m. I study for four hours. I, you know, I eat breakfast. I look amazing. I drink enough water, all of this. And then after work, I'm totally going to feel like studying for another five hours. And that's never the case. So, you know, a very big piece of advice is be realistic about how this fits into your schedule. Some of my guidance that I suggest starting with, set aside the time each week to read through the beer sub styles for that week. And I would budget, if you have a hard copy of the, the guidelines, if you don't, don't worry, I'll show you where to get them. You know, five to 10 minutes per style to read through them and, you know, just have some familiarity before the session. So when we're talking about them during the sessions, you've already, you know, read that information for the first time, but really about five to 10 minutes per style. Some styles don't need as much time and attention as others. Um, you know, there are some beer styles that are, a little more obscure than others, which doesn't mean that you won't see them on a beer judging exam, but it means that you're likely not to see them on a beer judging exam. So, and, and we'll see this in a moment also on the schedule, but if there are styles that require more or less attention, we'll specifically call those out. Those are going to be the styles. If I said name five beer styles right now, it's probably like the those five beer styles are on that list of here's what you need to pay attention to. You probably need to be a little more familiar with American IPA than you do a, a German Leichbier, right? Uh, so five to 10 minutes per style each week, you know, just set aside that time to read through them. And again, if, you know, if flashcards work for you, whatever works best for you, whatever's worked best for you in the past, do that and apply that same, you know, whatever method that is, apply that to your studying for this. Attend the weekly sessions and or review the slides and recordings. Our sessions are going to be on Monday evenings from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that's also why I wanted to make sure all of the sessions are recorded because if you, you know, if that is just never going to work for you, that information is still available to you. Um, so definitely don't self-select out thinking that not being able to make the sessions means that you won't be able to succeed in, in achieving these goals. I'll suggest some supplemental resources along the way, but you know, through all of my journeys through BJCP and Cicerone, it has 90, 95% of it has come out of my pocket. It gets expensive. I bought all the books. All the books do not deserve <laughs> your money. They don't deserve to be purchased. Uh, there are some really good ones out there. And definitely as you're reading through them, if there's a particular beer style that really catches your interest, I can guarantee that there's at least a couple of really good books out there to learn more, you know, just outside of judging, just to learn more about different styles that may seem interesting to you. Uh, so all of that to say, the guidelines... That's your primary source. And, you know, I, I, particularly with BJCP, if you end up wanting to go through the BJCP program, the guidelines are really all that you need. The guidelines in this course and the, the resources that I have so far posted uh, for support are all free. You know, they're all PDFs um, or websites. So just know there are some supplemental resources that if you want to learn more about styles, I can definitely make those suggestions. We can make those suggestions for each other. The guidelines are really all you're going to need. I would establish a schedule for practicing score sheets. 
I think this is one of the most important things that you can do, even more so than reading through the styles um, as, well, equally as important as reading through the styles. Establish a schedule for practicing your score sheets. That is going to be key for you. Uh, my suggestion, aim for one per week. Work up to completing them within 15 minutes. So once a week, set aside 20 minutes, set aside 30 minutes so you can, you know, you don't have to rush to like get your beer out and pour it in a glass and, you know, get your pencil or whatever. You know, 15 minutes once a week is, a, is a, an easy co commitment to make. Uh, we're going to reference the tasting exam overview. I would use that um, almost as training wheels. That's something that we'll discuss next week. Just to make sure that you're doing all of those best practices and picking up all of the points you could possibly get for when you do take the beer judging exam, you don't even think about it. You've already been practicing, you know, you know what to do. Work up to completing them within 15 minutes. This is key. Um, for one, during the tasting exam, you have about 15 minutes per beer to complete a full score sheet. In competitions, being a fast judge, also a thorough judge, but being a fast judge is very much appreciated by, um, by competition organizers. You don't, you simply can't spend, you know, 30 minutes thinking through a beer, filling out a score sheet. It has to be very quick. Uh, so I want you to work up to completing a score sheet within 15 minutes. And just as a reference, when um, I was at NHC this, this past week, we had about an hour to taste through our beers, fill out score sheets, decide which three we're going to advance to the next round. We had anywhere from eight to 10 beers. So I was completing full score sheets within five minutes per beer. Now that is extremely fast. You won't need to worry about that in most venues for something like GABF, if that's a goal for some of you, for something like National Homebrew Competition, any of the big competitions where they have thousands of entries to get through, you'll, you'll want to be able to have that skill Having that skill will make you invaluable to organizers and you will always be invited back because they know that they're not going to have to, you know, everybody's waiting around for you to finish a score sheet. And then you can upload those score sheets for review and feedback. This is also really important. I, I want to make sure that, you know, nobody is, I, I know that the chances of somebody going completely off the rails is going to be very slim, but uh, you know, when I was first judging and when I was first starting to go through the BJCP process, there was a lot of information that I learned about best practices and things after the fact, where it was like, well, if I, if I would have known that, then I would have been doing it correctly from the beginning. So definitely upload those score sheets for review and feedback. Don't feel self-conscious about it. Um, I don't have a picture of it, but I can guarantee you I will show you a picture of the score sheet that I just got back last week from a competition. A professional brewer filled it out and it said, aroma, good, malty. Appearance, good. Flavor, moderately good. Mouthfeel, good. Overall impression, moderately good. That was literally all the feedback on the score sheet that I got. You are not going to be doing that. <laughs> so <laughs> that is a professional brewer filling out a score sheet. That bar is very, very low. I tell you that to let you know, you fill out the score sheet and don't worry about the quality of your feedback. That's what we're here to do for you and help you through. Don't spend time trying to memorize stats. Just don't. Uh, we will talk through, you know, if, if a your style has a higher ABV, mid ABV, things like that. If you're worried that you're going to have to memorize stats, do not be worried any longer. Do not spend any time trying to memorize stats. You don't need to. You won't need to. You won't need to. You'll have, you'll need to have an idea of beer styles. And, you know, again, if I say, here's an American light lager and you get significant alcohol burn when you drink it, like, then you're going to know that that's probably not a good example of an American light lager, but you're not going to taste it and say, this tastes like it's a 4.5 ABV instead of a 4.3. Like, don't do that. Don't worry about it. Put it out of your mind. You don't need to know that. If you're working on towards your Cicerone certification, you really don't need to memorize stats until you're at the advanced or master level. So you can also kind of put your mind to ease on that if you are one of those people. 
So the next steps I have for you. The first step is joining the member area of under the gemfluence.beer. And we will go to that shortly. Um, download the 2015 BJCP style guidelines app. If you don't already have it on your phone, um, it is free. And there you will may, may see a couple of different versions of the app. Uh, these are the two that I recommend. So if you have Apple, look for the BJCP styles. If you have an Android, look for the BJCP 2015 beer styles. If you have something that's not an Apple or an Android, or if you're looking at other, other apps and you're wondering like, hey, will this do? Feel free to, you know, to shoot me an email about it and ask, and I, I can take a look. But those are really the best ones for having the app. Having the app on your phone is um, crucial. So make sure that you get get the app. Uh, I, for one, at a lot of competitions now, when you go in to judge, even pre-pandemic, uh, competitions were getting away from having printed hard copy guidelines for a couple of reasons. One, they're expensive. Um, and two, they're hard to keep track of. They seem to walk off sometimes. So most of them also now rely on judges having that app on their phone. You do need to also have a hard copy of the BJCP guidelines. There's a lot of information in the hard copy of the guidelines that is not in the app. The app is great for if you're at a competition and you don't need to know the, you know, the history of the style or something like that when you're just looking at those descriptors and those stats, but the hard copies are going to have more background. They may have, um, sometimes with the apps, there may be a style comparison. Um, there's usually a more robust ingredients section. Uh, so print, purchase, download a copy of the BJCP guidelines. I've also got these links on the website that we'll look at um, shortly, but uh, make sure that you have that hard copy. That makes all the difference. Um, and if you, I'm a tactile person, I still like to have the actual hard copy and I neglected to get mine out to show you how like grungy and torn up and uh, like little flags stuck in the guidelines mine are. Uh, after our last judging interest meeting in April, I got so many pictures of like very crispy new guidelines. It really makes me happy. Uh, if you're okay with a just an electronic version, then just have the PDF. If you don't need to have that hard copy, you don't have to have it. Printing wise, I printed mine at work one day. Um, if that's not something that's available to you, I've, I have suggest sending it to someplace like Office Max, Office Depot, you know, FedEx, someplace that has a print and copy center. And I think it's maybe $10 or so to get it front and back. You don't need color. You can just do black and white on, you know, like whatever the lowest cost paper they have. It's less than $10 to do that. And then uh, purchasing with the store and uh, that link we will also look at in just a moment. That is, uh, I think it's around like $14 or so, but it comes, it is color, it's two-sided, it comes in a very nice spiral bound notebook with a cover that keeps it, keeps your guidelines from looking like my guidelines. So if that's something that you would like as well, do that, but you need to have the hard copy of the guidelines. That's going to be crucial for you. So uh, this is my thank you. Here is my information, what we're going to do next, I'm going to stop sharing here. And I'm going to share this other screen. And again, as you all have questions, feel free to put those in the Q&A. And when we are um, finished, I, I think we'll probably have a good amount of time left to discuss those, but I can also bring up a couple of the questions we had in the first interest meeting. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to share my screen again, and I will walk you through the website so when I am talking about, you know, where you can go to find these things, you will be able to see it. Okay, so this is the under the gemfluence.beer. This is my blog that has now been repurposed as a beer judge training location. When you go here, 
you can sign up right here on the home page. Click sign up. And um, as you see, I already have an account, so I'm just going to go to sign in. One of the things I joked about the last time is um, I, with all of the, <laughs> these things, it's like I have, uh, you know, I want to do these weekly sessions. How do I do it? Okay, I need a Zoom. Do I want this or do I want that? So there's like, you know, 15 little steps uh, for each thing. Know that I am working on how to make a sign in a little bit more seamless, uh, but for now, I already have an account. I'm going to go to sign in. And what this is going to do is take me to the members area of the website. Again, it is completely free to join. And this is where this is going to be our home base for everything. So you'll see once you're in, you're going to be on the Beer Judge Training Navigation page. The first thing I want to show you is the Beer Judge Training resources. One thing you will learn um, if you try to do anything on the BJCP website, big disclaimer, they are all volunteers. Every, you know, So I, I try to be respectful of that, but the website is a mess and there's a lot of information on there that you know I'm on the website almost every day and I forget how like where I go to find this information. Since I sat down and created this resource page for us, this is where I go now. Like I don't even mess with the BJCP website anymore because I have everything I need right here. So you'll see if you would like to either just have the PDF copy or print a hard copy, you can go to the style guidelines and that's just going to pull up that PDF. And again, like I said, you don't need color. This The title page is the only color page that you'll have, um, but that is going to, um, I did not mean to go that far back. But that's where you can go to find the, that hard copy of the guidelines. So I have two score sheets on here. One is the competition score sheet. One is the exam version. We'll talk about the, the score sheets a little bit more in the next session when we just kind of go through the BJCP structure and the tasting exam. But when you take a tasting exam, you have a different version of the score sheet than what you would have at a competition. And I can just briefly show you this is what a normal score sheet is going to look like that you will fill out if you go to a, a BJCP sanctioned competition to judge. When you go to take your tasting exam, your score sheet is going to look like this. So you'll see the main difference is they still have all of those descriptors on the side, but they don't tell you what the descriptors are. You'll need to know them. Don't worry about that because we also have a resource for that as well. Then the next thing we have on here, the next few things are the study guides and the score sheet guides. These um, are, are going to be great to read through a few times. You know, really with the score sheet guide, when I discovered that this guide existed, my scores on my written and my tasting shot up because what this does, they created it for exam graders to use. Uh, as a reference, but it is also great for exam takers. So you understand exactly how your test is supposed to be graded. So both of those exam study guides are on there for you. The next one is this BJCP exam for dummies. Uh, this is a, a gentleman, his name is Al Boyce. He is a grandmaster, some level of BJCP. Um, another thing you will find is they are really, really into hierarchy with, within the BJCP. So we'll talk about that too next time. This is something that he's written as just practical advice. This is such a good resource. He was kind enough to uh, not only agree to let me post it on here, but he actually sent me this updated version. Uh, so this is going to be great. We'll reference this quite a bit moving through all of our different, um, any of the, you know, the BJCP exams you're taking. This is like really good, just practical guidance on taking those exams. The beer fault list. So when I said, I don't want you to worry about learning those, having to learn the descriptions, uh, this is such a great resource to have anyway. So if you're going to print out two things, uh, print out your BJCP guidelines and print out this beer fault list. I printed this out when I first started judging and it got so ratty because I just had it folded up and carried it in my back pocket and took it to every competition I went to until I, until I started to learn for myself okay, if I'm tasting acetaldehyde, it's going to taste like green apples. Uh, it's going to, 
you know, you might want to look at your fermentation, all of those sorts of things you will learn eventually. This is a really great thing to have. And most competitions will have this available, but not all of them. Um, and one thing that I've seen some judges do that may be good for you also is they just have their judges binder and within their binder, just a three ring binder, they have their guidelines, they have this beer fault list, you know, anything else that they might find helpful when they show up to judge at a competition, they'll have in that binder and they just grab it and bring it, bring it with them. This is a really good resource. It's not the most complete. This is, this, this will get you there. You know, it's a one page simple beer fault list. I would highly recommend printing that one out as well. Uh, so when, you know, when you're at a regular competition, as I showed you on the score sheet, you have all of those off flavor descriptions when you show up for your exam, if you've been referencing this sheet. So when you don't have those, you'll, you know, you'll already know that, oh, I get some green apple in this. This is acetaldehyde. These are some of the issues that can cause acetaldehyde in beer. So this is a really great resource. And then the last one is this beer fault guide. This is a very good one as well. Um, it is put together, and, and not to minimize, it's put together by some person um, who did a very good job. It's not, you know, peer reviewed. It's not an official document. There's some information in there that's not 100% correct, but there's nothing that is factually wrong. So this is another good guide to have. I will use this from time to time, even studying for advanced Cicerone or master Cicerone. If there's something kind of esoteric that I'm trying to find, I'll look in here and see if it's here. And then, you know, it also helps kind of guide me on that right down the right path to find the information I'm looking for. So those are your resources. One of the things that was asked last time was if we could add a Cicerone uh, sample exam on here. So I will work on that. As you're studying, if you have any resources that you would like to see or you think would be helpful, or maybe you're going to this one website over and over again, again, let me know and we can get it added on there. But like I said, since I made this page, this is my, this is how I navigate the BJCP website now. It's just coming to this page that I, I personally made. So, the next thing I'll show you is the submit a question or feedback. So this is the form that I've been referencing. As you see, you have the option to submit anonymously. You won't receive a personal response, but the response will go out um, in, you know, in the form of, hey, here's just a, a blurb that answers this. You know, you'll see it and you'll know it's because you asked. You're free to submit anonymously as much as you would like. Um, you know, if you would like a personal response, you can just say, I would like to submit my contact information to receive a response. And then I'll respond to you directly. Now, if I get a lot of the same kinds of questions, that will also go out to everybody. Uh, but, you know, I've had people say like, hey, I can't make this meeting. When is the next one? Uh, this is, do you know this question to this BJCP thing? Anything you need, you can contact me on here. Name, email. If you've got, I've kind of have it broken down. If it doesn't, if you've got a question that doesn't apply to any of these things, just hit other. It's fine. It's, uh, you know, I love hearing from people. So don't ever think that you're asking too many questions or that you, um, you know, you can't ask something. And I don't know, I, I know I didn't mention in, in this one, but, you know, previously to joining the beer industry, I worked as an attorney. I keep confidentiality very important. Um, I hold that very close. So I also don't want you to think that it's not okay to contact me. This, you know, the information that you send me stays with me. And if it is something that, you know, should go out to the group, then that your information will be taken off of that. And more than likely, I'll probably also ask you if it's okay if I can share my response with other people, um, again, with everything as anonymous, uh, with everything anonymous. So, you know, know that this is here and you can always contact me. Then I'm going to actually skip this event calendar quickly and go to the Beer Judge Training weekly presentations. You can see here's my face. I don't have those roses anymore, but this is where you'll come for all of the presentations and they'll be uploaded within 48 hours of each session. You'll see that you will have access to the PDF, which is going to be like this PDF or the slides that I'm using right now. 
So you will have the option to do the PDF, the PDF, geez, the <laughs> PDF, uh, and the audio only. If you just want to listen to my melodious voice and not see me gesturing wildly, um, you can just listen to the audio. But this is where those will live each week. And and the last thing I want to talk about with you all is this event calendar. So this is where you'll be able to see we've got each one of our week trainings on there within each one. I will tell you what the topics are going to be. I will give you the, the link to RSVP for the Zoom series. You also have the option here of adding it to your Google calendar, to your Apple calendar. The only caveat with doing the Google Calendar, which is, is purely a matter of personal preference, is that if you do Google Calendar, what it's going to do is give you the option to just add this. You won't also have that Zoom information on there. You know, that's, that's totally fine. That's going to be up to you and what you want to see on your schedule every week. If you RSVP to the Zoom session, it will also give you the, um, the option to add it to your calendar and then it gets added to your calendar with, with the actual link to join the meeting when the time comes. So this is on each one of the weeks. And I will also navigate to, let's go to week three is when we're going to start our actual beer styles. And so you can see, I've made a note on here, beer styles in bold are more commonly tested on exams, um, such as the BJCP beer judging exam, the certified Cicerone exam. When you look at something like this, you know, okay, I don't need to spend a ton of time on check Amber Lager, uh, but I'll still read through it. But I don't, I don't need to be maybe as familiar with that as I do with check Premium Pale or with American Lager. Those styles are just more commonly tested because they're commonly more available. So you can go into each one of those and see which styles you, you know, if you're spending five minutes on the non-bolded ones and 10 minutes on the bolded ones. So these are on here. And then the other thing I want to show you that is on here for now is, let me go, August is a good one. So what I've done is on the BJCP website, on their exam calendar, I have gone through and added all of the currently scheduled beer judging uh, exams. And I should also say, you might hear me say tasting exam or beer judging exam. I'm talking about the same thing. Um, it is a tasting exam. So what you can do, you'll see the way that I have, like here we have Australia, Sydney. If it's in the US, I have it by the state first and the town is in parentheses. Clicking into this, what you will see when you want to register for an exam, you need to contact the exam administrator directly. You'll see that I have that note on there. You'll see that I've also included the exam administrator, the email and the phone number. And I believe for almost, there's only one that has like an online sign up form. Everybody else, you email them directly. Um, you know, when I email, I just say, hi, I'm interested in taking your beer judging exam on this date. Do you have seats available? We'll talk about that a little bit more next time when we talk about um, barriers and perceived gatekeeping. But this is going to be how you schedule a seat on a tasting exam. And you can see here, we'll go this is the list on the BJCP website of the currently scheduled exams. All of the tasting exams that are on here are also on the schedule that is on the on our website with all of this information. So I, you know, I really just transferred it over. And that is anything that's on there now um, currently is also on the website, but that's just what the exam schedule looks like if you go to that. So a couple of things about the beer judging exam. So questions that I have gotten, you can take a beer judging exam anywhere. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to wait until it is in your town. If you are able to travel and want to travel, do it. I, I, I flew to Indy 
using airline points to take the exam in Indianapolis two weeks ago. You know, I've gone to Richmond. I've, um, I'm trying to think of some of the others. When I didn't live in Atlanta, I drove to Atlanta for one. If you were able to do that, go ahead and do it. I know somebody had reached out to me about a beer judging exam because there's one in the Bay Area later this year and she has family down there. And so she said, can I, it, would that be okay for me to email and see if I, you know, if I can go and take the exam there? And I was like, yeah, like you can go, you can go anywhere. Um, the other thing that as you're looking through here, um, again, you are always welcome to contact me. I have had a handful of people say, hey, I see that there's a beer judging exam near me in August or in September. Should I, should I sign up? Would I be prepared enough? Just know my blanket answer is always going to be, hell yes, sign up right now. That has been my response to everyone who has emailed to say, do you think I'll be prepared? Yes, you will absolutely be prepared. If you see one near you, email. Email today, email when we're done here, contact the administrator, get a seat for the exam. You will be ready. You will be ready for a ton of different reasons, not just in 14 weeks you will be ready, but we'll go through more of what that exam looks like and you know what you can accomplish by taking that beer judging exam just once. So if you're looking through here and you want to know if I think you should sign up, I think you should sign up. Just sign up. Don't even think about it. Just 54321 email, sign up, get a seat for these. So the other thing that you're going to be seeing on the, I'm going to stop this share. Uh, so the other thing that you will be seeing on that event calendar shortly is opportunities for judging. Uh, so that will be, you know, a, mostly homebrew competitions who are looking for judges as you see one that's near you or near somewhere you're going to be. Again, I've traveled before to judge in competitions. Um, email, email them and ask if they need judges. Every competition needs judges. I, I it's been, I, I can think of one competition where I judged and they actually had enough judges. Uh, and, you know, last weekend with the Women International Brewing Summit, we were doing a beer judge training and somebody said, well, don't you need experience before you show up to judge? No, showing up to judge is your experience. That is how you get the experience. Um, and we, uh, you can, if you're able to go back and look at what that, uh, the beer judging 101, but you know, when you sit down at a table, you're told what your style is, you open up your guidelines, you read through the style. You don't need to walk into any competition as a judge and feel like you're an expert in any style. And you don't need to wait until you feel like you are an expert. I don't like, I don't, as a judge, I don't want to judge with experts. I'm not an expert. I want to judge with people who are going to be open-minded and, you know, reading through and thinking, is this a good interpretation of this style? Is this a good recipe for this style? And having those kinds of conversations. So I will be adding those on here. Know that, let me see if I can quickly navigate to it. There is also a calendar on the BJCP website. If you go to the homepage, you can go to competitions and then competition calendar. Go through, you know, when we're finished here and read through those and see what kinds of competitions might be near you. Um, I had recommended that to uh, one of my BA mentors a few weeks ago, and she found one near her, and she's going to judge in her first competition in a couple of weeks. And so far, she's had a really positive experience with, you know, with being involved in the planning and knowing what's going to go on. Sign up. That's how you get experience. Uh, this past year, I was fortunate enough to be able to judge a GABF for the first time. I'll be going back this year. And somebody said, this is a goal of mine. If judging at GABF is a goal of yours, it's accessible to you, you, you know, show up at those homebrew competitions and judge. And that's, you know, that's part of what we'll be working on as we work through this program. So I'm seeing, I don't think I see any questions. We do have a few minutes left. Um, so if you do have questions, pop them in the Q&A and I'm going to get another drink of water because I, uh, I drank too much last night. So I'm trying to <laughs> hydrate today. And I will say briefly, um, another question that we got last time was, 
the difference between BJCP and Cicerone. And the, I think that they're both still extremely helpful. There's, you know, there's positives and negatives to both of them. But when somebody is studying for their Cicerone, for any level of their Cicerone, I 100% of the time tell them, you need to be doing BJCP. You need to start judging. It's the best, absolutely the best palate training that you can do. I mean, it's nothing compares to it. You sit down to, you know, 10 beers that all say that they're a Kolsch. And what you find is eight ways to make an okay Kolsch. And, you know, like one, one way, whoa, not to make a Kolsch and then one way to make an award-winning Kolsch. So, you know, you're being critical, you're going through with your palate and developing that, developing that beer vocabulary. So anytime somebody's doing Cicerone, the first thing I say is do BJCP. Somebody's doing BJCP, I don't always tell them to do Cicerone because it depends on what their goals are for BJCP. But they are very similar in that there are, I guess Cicerone has four levels, but they both have an online entrance exam that is very similar in its structure. For both of them, you need to pass that exam before you can go on to the other levels. For BJCP, once you've taken that online exam and passed, then you can set for your tasting exam. And you can schedule a tasting exam without having passed that online exam, which is also why when, when, you know, when you're reaching out, wanting to know if you should schedule it, yes, absolutely, you can schedule that without having, without having passed your online exam. You will need to pass it before you show up for the tasting exam, um, but you, you can sign up for your tasting exam without having passed that. Your tasting exam will give you, uh, is what's going to be the thing that gives you your BJCP ID. That's when you can start accumulating points. We'll talk about all of the points and everything next week. Um, and then after you have a certain score in your tasting exam, you can take the written exam to advance farther up through the BJCP ranks. With Cicerone, they have the online exam. Then there's the certified Cicerone, which is about a four hour exam that is written with an oral component and a tasting exam. The advanced exam is the third level. That is a one day long exam with basically the same setup. You're going to have, you know, different, uh, a written portion, two oral portions, and I believe four tasting portions. The master exam is super scary, but it's basically the advanced exam, but two days in a row. So those are the differences between the two. And again, depending on your goals, if you're wondering which one might be right for you, feel free to reach out. We can talk about it and decide, but definitely if you're doing, uh, definitely if you're doing any kind of Cicerone, start doing BJCP, start judging, start talking to people critically and analytically about beer. So I see that we do have one question. Uh, any chance there will be a directory message board to find local women interested in meeting up informally to watch your videos and practice tasting? Yes, Sally, thank you for asking. And I'm very glad that you asked that actually because uh, we discussed that last time. And what I'm thinking, the avenue I'm thinking I'm going to go with is Discord. Uh, with the website, there's not a very elegant way to create a forum, but I will create a community for us that we will be able to um, you know, connect. So we'll have the, the main message board. Discord, if you're not familiar with it, is very similar to Slack. Um, I might go with Slack as well. If you have like strong experience or feelings about either one, please let me know because um, I definitely want to create a community for all of us. Uh, and I know with both of those, it's possible to actually break it down into regions. So that way you can say like, hey, I'm in St. Louis, let's get together and, and do a tasting or something like that. So we will have that. That is one of those up and coming things that I will um, hopefully have set up for you all when we actually get started next week. And also just be on the lookout later on this week, you'll get another email blast from me that will contain really a lot of the same information. You all were very fortunate that I learned all my lessons from the first interest, interest meeting. And uh, since then I was also able to add that events calendar and add those things in. 
but you'll see an email from me later this week that's going to kind of outline all of this, point you to where you need to go to on the website. But just know that once you join that members area, you know, anything that you think like, where do I find that? You can probably find it there. For some reason you can't, let me know. Um, so with that, uh, we will wrap it up. Thank you all very much for joining me today. And um, I'm super stoked about this. I hope you are too. I think you all are. Um, I, like I said, I've been absolutely blown away by the amount of response that I've gotten both from women wanting to do this to people wanting to make that happen. So uh, next week we will officially kick off and we will be starting talking about the BJCP overview, talking about the online exam and the judging exam. Uh, this is not affiliated with BJCP, but it is very BJCP focused. We'll talk about that more uh, next week, a little bit why that is. Uh, but definitely uh, make sure you get your guidelines, download that app. Let me know if you have any questions. Be on the lookout for that um, information about our, our sessions coming up as well as uh, that community forum that we'll have. Um, and then the very last thing I'll say is I know a, a couple of people have also emailed to say, hey, I have a friend who's interested too. Is it too late to join? No, it's never too late to join. You can direct uh, anybody who is interested to that members area and have them sign up. And that goes, you know, as we're going through the program, as you've seen, everything's going to be posted on the website. So if somebody finds out about it in July and wants to jump in and get started, they can jump in and get started. The whole goal is to get more women at the judging table, you know, make the beer judging world more accessible for us and, you know, and have this awesome network of, of beer judging women. So with that, I will thank you all. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Somehow it's already the month of May um, and also my husband's birthday. So I <laughs> need to go help him celebrate that. So thank you everyone. And I really look forward